And you know what, ladies and gentlemen, we've actually done it. Here we have intelligent and pretty in the same human being. Yes, they might be our great granddaughter and granddaughter rolled into one, but they are strong and wise. Today, we're going to be attempting some genetic ascension, but we won't be doing it in Stellaris. We'll be doing it in Crusader Kings 3. One of the many, many primitive DLC expansions for Soul 3 that Paradox have released. They really are obsessed with the backstory of this primitive world. We're going to be attempting to unlock, through the power of genetics, the best and greatest species in the galaxy. We might end up with some lizard-like traits in doing this, but that will all be for the better. I promise. Let's start a new game, and we'll be going with something of an apparently hard start with Earl Alfred of Wessex down south here. But don't worry, ladies and gentlemen, Alfred is actually the perfect specimen to begin our genetic project. You see, Earl Alfred is already one step along the route to being genetically ascended. He has a congenital traits. In Crusader King 3, we can pass along our congenital traits to our children. So step one will be to uh, <clears throat> pass along those genes. So let's get on with that immediately. And while at nighttime, Alfred here will be very, very busy getting on with things, we do need to find him a job in the daytime. And we're going to need some extra cash. Let's dive him on into that conundrum. There also seems to be some sort of war going on at the moment. I'm not entirely sure if it's got anything to do with us, though. The, uh, the people of York are moving south, and somebody else from somewhere is attacking East Anglia. We, though, just own the little county of Dorset here and the barony of Wareham, so I don't think this has anything to do with us whatsoever. We'll be keeping very much out of it. Now, I did mention that we are going to be saving up a bit of cash. We've now reached an impasse. Either we can uh, buy the affections of our lovely Countess Edba, or we can just do whatever she asks. I think doing whatever she asks would be the cheaper option here, assuming she doesn't try and steal our cash from us in the future. Well, a lot seems to have happened almost immediately. We've uh, inherited the entire kingdom of Wessex. Let's take a look at that. Yes, oh, we've become the head of the Anglo-Saxon culture. We're a petty king with a dynasty head and somebody in our dynasty has given birth to a little girl, Agatha. But what's really gone on here? Well, I was busy attempting to appoint some people to my court and instead of that happening, my brother died making me the king. Though on a deeply sad note, we are still without any offspring. It is impossible to see the results of our genetic blending unless we get some actual experimental data. So I'm going to make sure to give away a bunch of these extra castles that are simply taking up too much of our time. We need to be focusing on more important things. And if you're enjoying this video, please, breed that like button. Well, apparently I made a bit of a boo-boo. I didn't actually have to give away those two castles. I uh, did that a little prematurely. Now that we've filled up our council with our queen and a bunch of folks that seem to like us very much, we could have actually had a few more castles within our management structure. Oops. There's a whole bunch of raiders now in the midst of our country and we are still at war about something to do with East Anglia. So we're gonna expunge these raiding fools and then once they're knocked out of the way, we'll hopefully go and win this war. Stabby stabby, death to the primitives. We're gonna try and dance our way into the petty queen's heart. And what an evening we've had. Well, there we are. We've got her down to her undergarments. She is not well. She's not well at all, goodness gracious me. Hopefully that won't become a problem. Oh. We're going to search for a physician. Hopefully we can cure the wife. Otherwise, I suppose we could just find a new one at some point. Because we are such a pious, pious person, we can go and extort our head of faith Pope Nicholas here, and we can talk to Pope Nicholas and say, hey, Nicholas, we need a little cash injection. And that just goes brilliantly well. Fantastic. We've managed to trap most of uh, Jarl Ivar's army up here in the hills. It looks like we're going to get our stibby stab on and possibly take him down. Now, whilst we didn't actually manage to capture our opponent, we have captured a fellow here that can be ransomed for a petty gold injection, giving us yet more money to be added to the proverbial pile. 
and I am nothing if not a person that wants extra tax money in the middle of the afternoon. Mm -mm -mm. Let's invest this cash into possible future potential cash cows, like farming. Right, she's no longer sick. Let's attempt to romance her. Hopefully, this will finally make the darn thing, I mean, beautiful wife, produce a baby. We are going to lay it on thicker than you could possibly imagine. And it looks like the very heavens themselves have smiled upon us. The first in our long line of offspring is soon to be on the way. Huzzah! Huzzah! <laughs> and it looks like we've been blessed with a son. Ethelwolf, who's going to be hopefully carrying on this lineage. Not much to look at yet, don't worry, but we are going to be pushing for better and better children as time goes on. As if Crusader King III knows the path we're taking here, we are now known as Alfred the Great, the first in a long line of fantastic human beings I can only assume. East Anglia seems to have fallen. That could have been a problem for them, but I don't think it's going to be that big a deal. Instead, we're going to go on a pilgrimage and it's going to be absolutely wonderful. Yes, yes, yes. And we are very pleased with ourselves. This genetic path is the perfect path to walk if you want to touch the face of God. And uh, <clears throat> thanks to that pilgrimage, we can pilfer some extra cash from the Pope yet again. It's beautifully balanced and we'll then use that to build up more and more farms. It looks like our quick wits have managed the job a second time. So far, the first experiment has proved somewhat inconclusive. We've got a rowdy four-year-old who is apparently also a gambler. Mm, interesting. But we're going to try again and again as many times as it takes until we succeed in the name of science. And this one should probably be Ethelred. Hopefully he's ready and won't have any issues. Piety for cash, piety for cash. That's what we want to do. And that's really what we're going to keep doing. It's a great tax rebate system. Okay, we've now got three sons. Luke has entered the playing field as well. With these three children, hopefully one of them does actually have the intelligent trait that we're trying to pass on here. Now we need to expand our dynasty legacy. I'm looking at one specific line here that may improve the chances of this genetic experiment from succeeding. And you're darn right, I'll be going down it. Blood will out, as they say, and we'll be trying to improve our congenital traits wherever possible. And we've done it again for a fourth time, ladies and gentlemen. We also seem to have some claims on Nottingham and Lincolnshire. Interesting stuff. There are some interesting humans on this primitive planet. Some of them still haven't quite figured out how to wear clothes. Finally, we've got a daughter that's also going to be useful. We do want to test the genetic variety in both sides of the family here. Well, apparently the naked people have now formed a new cult or a new culture, I should say, the Anglo-Nordic culture, a bastardization of our own pure heritage, which is what we're trying to improve upon here. Terrible. We've done it for a fifth time. Goodness gracious me. Yes, for the fifth time in a row, pregnancy is once more on the table. We're not specifically fecund here. We've just, I guess we're just really clever at doing it. And we are very much committed to the challenge at hand. Uh, yeah, Cornwall looks like the possessed petty king won't be around much longer there. Or at least as soon as we can uh, get rid of this annoying truce. We face an important decision here. We're ready to mint new coinage either. We can mint new silver coins to facilitate trade, mint some gold coins with our own face on it, or we could uh, debase the coinage to get most of the benefits and extra cash by just putting a little bit of nickel in there. I'm sure these backwater primitives are going to have absolutely no idea, so we're going to do that. Aha, uh -huh. so it turns out it takes six attempts before it gets good, you see? We have, on our sixth attempt, birthed a son named Alfred after my own great self at this moment, Alfred the Great, and this son finally has the congenital trait intelligent. He is slightly ill, that could be a slight problem, but we've just hired a court physician who is rather good at their job. Hopefully, they can help our sickly new son. Time to go and grab Cornwall now.
If you're enjoying this video and you'd like to do something to support this channel whilst also getting your hand on a great deal, you can buy Crusader King 3 at a discount in the Humble Bundle Black Friday sale until December the 2nd by following the link down in the description below. Not only is Crusader Kings 3 on sale at the moment, but there is a whole host of other Paradox games, DLC, and a bunch of games outside of Paradox that you can get discounted right now. All of that and more down in the description below. Well, we're gonna try and pair our son up with uh, Murren Lork here, who's apparently beautiful. Hopefully that can pass through the genetics of this fellow. Even though they are something of a failure here, Mm, yes, I would actually much rather they simply die of this illness. So somehow, what we're going to have to do is make Alfred Alfredson our only heir. The issue is, we've been a little bit prolific with our heirs, and so Alfred now stands to only inherit the kingdom of East Sexy. <whistles> right, we found the perfect match for our second son here, Ethelred Alfredson, and that is Ida de Hainault. Ida is Amazonian, Herculean in fact, and we're going to be hoping we can push that trait into our beautiful, beautiful grandchildren. So, yet another son could start to be a bit of an issue here, yes. Mm. And here comes the first grandchild, Wolfofled. Let's check them out, what traits do they have? Oh, they've got quick! That's something, that is something. Perhaps our son here simply was holding that gene on to pass it along yet further. They don't seem to have beautiful, but we'll have to see what we can get together. We're gonna go out and grab just a couple of alliances by arranging the marriages of our daughters. That alliance should just about give us enough soldiers to declare a holy war here for one of the previously lost duchies. And then just attempt to secure an overwhelming victory. I'll grab the most expensive mercenaries I can find. Right, let's send everybody in to attack this fella before they can run away into the ocean. No! God, please, no! 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 And that should be halfway towards winning this war. And then we'll pivot back and attempt to hit the Normans here before they can take too long after getting off of their ships. Which means we've achieved an overwhelming victory. Huzzah! And I guess we'll be going... Yoink! And taking that title. Now we're going to try and do something about the Jorvik up north here. Hopefully this won't be too much of an issue. Luke, our third son. Interesting bit of a facial shape he's got there. He is close to genetically uh, good, genetically pure. Although he does definitely have some issues. We're going to try and find him a spouse that will fit his demeanor and appropriate stature. We're going to try and grab Beautiful again. Hopefully we can get that somewhere in the family. Goss Patrick, uh, well, we're going to find out very soon what he's like. And then there's Alfred, Alfred, another Alfred to the family. This is just going brilliantly. We've made our son our knight, and not only that, our best friend. Oh, friend! Into our greatest chancellor ever, 24 diplomacy. This fellow may not have intelligence, but gosh darn it, he and his Herculean wife are doing pretty all right. I am once again asking for your financial support. And with that, the Pope has given us yet more in the way of fantastic cash. Right, that's victory. Wessex is now quite a long snickety snake. We could grab just a little bit more from the, uh, the folks that really don't seem to know how to wear clothing. But before we get on with any other conquest, we need to put our genetic superiority to the test here and prove ourselves as the kings of a new realm, Angleland, home of the Anglo-Saxons. We're gonna spend a little bit of extra cash on some better things, better lodgings, fashion, food, and some very much needed servants. Here we are sitting uh, in all our regalia with our best friend, our son, the chancellor, the one and only Prince Ethelred. Here's the lovely Luke. You know, this just this genetic thing's just going so well. Let's also hold court and listen to some petitions. Right, bit of nonsense here about goodness only knows what. We're going to respect traditions of our subjects and generally just make everyone uh, know that our court grandeur is very, very high indeed. We're also going to bring in the petty kingdom of Mercia, our uh, our nephew, King Wolfmir. Well, he's going to come in with, I'm thinking, normal feudal obligations. Yes, excellent. 
That leaves the annoying part of Lancaster over here and the terribly, terribly naked people. I, I suppose that's probably because they're just lunatics. I don't know why the wife is carrying on with it. This this one really boggles my brain holes. But um, yeah, we're going to go for the Yaldum of Lancaster. They've got a couple of allies, but we have allies of our own. Best I can find for Eidber uh, is this fella who's beautiful, apparently. I mean, he's got luscious locks, I suppose. Um, that is something we're going to try and bring into the family. We've already tried to grab it somewhere. We'll try and also grab it from somewhere else. Groovy, we've now grabbed uh, Lancaster. Fantastic news. So Alfred has come of age. He is intelligent. This is fantastic news. We're now going to attempt to find a pairing. We have someone else in our family here, Eidber, who is not a sibling and is in fact uh, one of our granddaughters, but Eidber here is pretty. We want to combine the pretty trait with the intelligent trait, so we're going to set them up together. I don't see any issues with this. Two fantastic inheritable traits, some, uh, some great boosts here to prestige. We're marrying to the brilliant Wessex house. Yes, no possible kind of red text anywhere. FBI, open up! Well, something interesting is happening here. Our two oldest children, one of which who is definitely quite a bit shorter than Prince Luke. Look at the height difference there. Goodness gracious me. Well, the tiny Prince Etherwolf, our current player heir, is demanding that they are entitled to more. Now, we have wanted to disinherit some of these children for quite a while now. Who could we disinherit? Well, we could uh, tell them they get along fine, or we could use this opportunity to disinherit Ethelwolf. Oh no, this would be a terrible thing to do inside of our family, but it will help us keep everything together. He, <laughs> it looks like Ethelwolf is very unhappy with that, but don't forget, our other son, our main contender here for the throne, Prince Alfred, is married to his daughter, Eidber. Yes, it's a fantastic web of family politics. And that's why we look like the picture of good health here on the throne. Well, the dynasty of Wessex here is starting to get rather extensive. We are pushing through to get Luke. Uh, sorry, I mean Alfred. I forget all these darn children. Alfred. Alfred is going to get on the throne. That's at least the intention. We've got two male heirs between us, one of them which is our, one of which is our food taster and the other is our chancellor. So we don't want to uh, damage those relations too much, but we must make sure to purify the bloodline. Cecily has made a questionable concoction. That is our court physician. We're going to give it to our son, Luke, in the minor hope that possibly he dies, maybe. Otherwise, we're going to get strong potion, which is going to help us out quite a bit. Give us a lovely health boost. Well, the strong potion definitely seemed to work on Luke here. We're going to give him the county of Surrey and see what he can do with it. Not just the county of Surrey, in fact, the entire petty kingdom of Kent. And then, you know what happened? Luke invited us to a feast, apparently. And when we turned up at that feast, there was no one there except our disinherited son, Ethelwolf. Well, um... And we're going to disinherit Luke. Well, we met a lovely, old, lustful, deceitful woman, and uh, that woman might have turned us into a little bit of a witch. I've had a look at Ethelred's traits. He is definitely uh, unready. And for that reason, I am going to be disinheriting him. It has absolutely nothing to do with the fact that I've now got enough renown to actually do this. Yes, pay no attention to the renown cost. Well. He's now disinherited, making Alfred, Alfredson, the greatest ruler the world will have ever known, into our one and only heir. We don't want to leave Ethelred here completely high and dry. So we have 250 gold. We're going to create the Duchy of Lancaster and we'll give that to Ethelred. I'm looking for a partner for my final daughter, the princess Leof Gifu. All I can find is evil and awful congenital traits. We've got lover's pox, two more cases of lover's pox, another case of lover's pox. There's really something going around here, I think, with the pox. A one-eyed king of West Francia, no thank you. Finally, someone of high standing, an intelligent man, this fellow. Yes, beautiful. He's a vindictive empath. 
and a lunatic. Well, I can't see anything going wrong with that. Let's go for a matrilineal marriage and get them all set up. And here is the blessed marriage. Let's sign that off straight away. We'll get these two producing heirs, offspring in hopefully no time at all. The great experiment has begun. One of our two initial breeding stock, the Queen Yellowswit, has now passed on. We are going to do something about that. We're going to host a grand feast. We found a second partner here. Well, this partner has intelligent as well. Perhaps if we can match together with our own self, hopefully this lady, whose name I'm not even going to pronounce, is going to be right on the perfect track. And uh, well, the Principality of the Hoopa, they're now ready to join with low feudal obligations under our great domain. Yes, England, the mighty Angle Land, is expanding yet further. Most excellent. But we can now also demand payments for our hooks, and very soon we'll be able to extort our subjects as well. Yes, this is going absolutely brilliantly. The one downside is that our foals here, our bucks, our research subjects, have yet to produce any viable candidates. It seems I may have judged my firstborn son, Ethelwolf Alfredson, too harshly. He has died in the marshes of East Anglia here. A stray arrow struck him down in a fierce, fierce skirmish. We're 65, but oh boy, we've still got it. Another test subject, I mean child, well on the way. But it seems I paid far too much attention to my sons and not enough to my daughters. Princess Lyovkifu here and Alexandrov have, on the first attempt, given birth to an intelligent child. This is Ethelred the Ready. But wait a minute, I spoke too soon. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you the greatest in genetic heritage already, presided over by myself, King Alfred the Great, and also the Mother Queen, whatchamacallit of nowhere in particular, we now have a genius child. Stand aside, Alfred, your time in the sun is very, very soon coming to an end. I'm now unfortunately though left at a bit of an impasse. The entire crux of this plan was to have a single heir uniting the whole of the kingdom. Do I give my genetically superior child the preference or do I keep it with Alfred? If I do actually disinherit Alfred here, which is something I can do, I'm not guaranteed that Nadbor here, the greatest Wessex that you'll ever know, Nadbor Alfredson, I'm not sure if they will actually survive into adulthood. And the longer I sit on this, the longer there could be a problem. I'm currently infirm, which means death is very, very close to claiming me. We'll throw Nadbor straight into the deep end here. They can sort out uh, Normandy, because I can't see there being any issues with that. And then hopefully Nadbor will come of age and we can just simply disinherit Alfred in the next, say, 15 years. All right, we've now got Knethrith here. And you know what, ladies and gentlemen, we've actually done it. Here we have intelligent and pretty in the same human being. Yes, they might be our great granddaughter and granddaughter rolled into one, but they are strong and wise. And gosh darn it, I think they might just as well be the future of this kingdom. Move aside, Nadbor, you've just been disinherited for the sake of those better around. We're also going to make sure that we can get that lady on the throne. So we're going to change our traditions here. We're going to establish equal inheritance for the Anglo-Saxon culture. It's going to be um, very ahead of its time. And now we've got intelligent twins. This is just wonderful here. You know, genetic ascension, don't be worried about it. Do make sure to mix those bloodlines, but keep it pure when necessary. We've managed to get not one, not two, but three intelligent children here out of this lovely breeding pet. Oh, they're just fantastic. The brave Prince Luke has also fallen in combat, slain by a high chieftain in the fields of South Wales. And I can feel it within my very bones. I will be dead within the year. And the brave Alexandros, father to three intelligent children, has killed Kuipra on another field, now in North Wales, near the barony of Harlech. And we've got another intelligent son here, Elfwig. Unfortunately, the first thing we're gonna have to do 
is disinherit him. He's not gonna like it, but we are about to die and we cannot allow this realm that we have been carving to be split in two. Because we're such good friends with Duke Rodri here, we've been able to bring him on as a vassalage, meaning Powis is now under our control. With Powis under our control, that means in much mere moments, we'll be able to form the Kingdom of Wales. And then England and Wales will be as one. Oh, and the Queen is pregnant again. Oh, for goodness sake. And that's it. That is it. We are now dead. The duty of forming the Kingdom of Wales will have to fall to Alfred II. But in our 69 year reign... Nice. We have achieved some fantastic inroads to genetic ascendancy, made things a whole lot better for everyone, and created the great kingdom of Angleland. And if you enjoyed this video and you'd like to see where my genetic experimentation will lead, let me know down in the comments below. And if enough people have been interested in me making that video, you can watch it by clicking the video on screen now.